All right, and good Monday night. I want to show you before we start. I just finished this bench. I've been working on it all weekend. Give you a quick rundown on it. This was the bench that I used to use before I got to keep my mahogany and maple one. So <coughs> I um, decided to redo it and then sell it. So I made a completely new base. I didn't like the one that it had. And I had uh, friend, the guy where I buy my lumber had some 12 quarter poplar, which is kind of hard to come by. So the base is 12 quarter poplar, poplar, same old thing, double tenons, and then pin them with uh, walnut pins. The stretchers are, are uh, we're out of four quarter, eight quarter walnut and maple pegs, maple wedges. And then up here in the top was where we did, well, this one has uh, has uh, hound's teeth dovetails, hound's tooth dovetails. We have a little dovetail inside a big dovetail. And then to dress it up a little bit, uh, you had some really nice, really nice walnut burl. So the end, the uh, ramps on either end of the tool trays, and they've got that little spring thing too to fill the gap, are, um, uh, it's a, uh, I veneered the walnut burl on there. And the bottom, I replaced the bottom, it's a solid wood bottom. I put that piece in that strengthens the, this back of the tool tray so it doesn't move. And then the uh, this had some holes in it from the lamp and they were all wrecked so I it was interesting. I had to cut about a quarter of an inch off of that and then glue another piece on and redo that. And then I made the uh, this lamp stand and that's burled on three sides. And then on the uh, vise, I burled the, the front and the back and the top, and I dropped it down just enough so that it wouldn't uh, hurt the way that it works, but at the same time, I'd, it wouldn't get damaged from being touched, so it sits below the surface of the bench. And then down here on this movable dog strip, I did the same thing. I, I redid that, and I put burl on top of that, but it's sunk down in just enough so that it's not going to get damaged when you're setting boards on top of it scratched up. I mean, it will eventually, but made new uh, handles for the vices, beefed the hardware up. Anyway, it's not sold yet, but there is somebody, I think, I can't remember who it was back in December that had asked me if I, if I would have, if I had one for sale. Well, i got to see if I can find the old email. That needs to be moved over. So just put that in. Anyway, back at this. So the other day, I had to have somewhere to put my chisel. So off camera, I just stuck that in there just to see what it was going to be like. And as it turned out, it it uh, instead of sitting back like that, it actually leaned forward a little bit. And for whatever reason, I like that better than having it stuck in like that. So I think I will play around with possibly leaving it like that. Now I've got to take this out and then I've got to mount it properly so that um, when it goes up, I guess I'll have to round these corners off too. I'm just trying to think how I can get it up there as high as possible and still make it so that when this folds up and the magnets touch, this part will be uh, parallel and touching the inside top. And then I'll have a magnet up in there and a piece of metal or something so that when that goes up, it'll hold it in place. And that'll be up high enough. Somebody was concerned about having to duck down to find those, but like I said, I don't use them enough to worry about that. Anyway, so I just got to figure out a way to hold this in place while I'm doing that. And I think what I'll do is just cut a couple pieces of plywood to secure that. And those, uh, those little magnets are just enough too, by the way. It doesn't take a lot to free them, but it, they um, stay put. So there's no reason to go to the bigger ones. I can't remember if I did any more of this off camera or not. I think this was the only part that I did. The next thing I gotta tackle is the saws because that's the other one that's driving me crazy. I use them a lot and they're always scattered all over the place. There's been a few suggestions, and I like somebody had an idea of a till that would actually tilt out like this when you're using it and then go back up in place when you weren't. And I, I'm gonna toy with that because I, I, uh, I like that idea. All right, so I need. Uh,
Canadians out there. Happy Canada Day tomorrow. For all the Americans. I guess we'll see you guys before. You can hear the fireworks uh, starting already. Uh, <laughs> we got to get a jump on celebrations. There's one. And I really like this. I use this a lot. I find it very convenient. The only thing I'm going to do a little bit different is I'm going to make a little pocket for this so that when that goes in, it goes down into a slot and then in there because that comes out. But as much as uh, some people thought that might be a little bit cumbersome, I really like it. By the way, we got Frick behind the camera tonight. Dave doesn't do nights. <laughs> Especially nights before a holiday. We we're scrambling trying to get everything ready for next week's workshops. Which there's still room if any last minute. Did, okay, you, anou I, did I, you announce I, that I was going to be there for the last two? No, I didn't. Clash Frick's going to be there for the last two, kill me. Class okay. should fill up now. What? Class should fill up now. Yeah, I can hear the phone ringing. <laughs> Where is my... See, I spend my entire day chasing around this shop trying to find tools because nothing has its place yet. So if this doesn't hurry up, I may go around the bend. Somewhere in here I have a drill trick. I need there's, to... There's one over there. That's not the one I want. I want my nice little Makita. Here it is over there in the corner. Dave's been cutting up stock for uh, practicing dovetails. Everybody in the class will end up going through about 16 pieces, so that times 32 or so is a lot of wood. Okay. Now, I didn't glue that dovetail together, but I don't think I need to. It's, um, it's going to stay put anyway. It's, it's, the reason I say that is that it's screwed to that piece of plywood all the way around, so. Now let's flush. Why am I going to blow that all over your camera? As soon as that goes into that plywood, it always moves. You can never seem to hit it just right. See, that was flushed back here, but it's now set in 30 seconds or so. I gotta get that moved out. on that until it moves it. Got an email from Jake today. He always says to say hello to all the 
members that remember him. Okay. Now I don't think I need... Well, I'll put one up at the top just because that's where it's going to be pivoting from. somehow. Good idea if it wasn't in my way. Well, my phone downloaded new something or other, and it took away my ringtone. So can you bring it back? No yeah, problem. I'm going into that piece of birch instead of the plywood, so it won't move on me again. You know what? I'm gonna put the uh, inch and a quarters in there because it's been splitting. That thing was too long for the drill bit I was using. <laughs> One of the best things I ever bought, there was a hardware store changing hands. 25 years ago and they had these blue trays that they used to sell nails or screws in and I got it for I think $25 there's about well there must be a hundred trays over there so it's the one bit of organization that I have Okay, now what to use for a pivot point up there? I think it's best to be a screw for the simple reason that if I ever need to take it out, a screw would be most accessible. I really can't conveniently get in there with anything, even with a stubby. So it'll have to go through this side. Now, Uh, probably just as easy to clean a little bit off of that and get that to fit. And those heads are sunk down in there enough that I shouldn't end up hitting them.
Now, I'm going to run that over the table saw and just flush up these pieces. So, I'll set it first. how much of an arc I need on that front. I think the first thing I'll do is just get some supports to hold that in place. Do I want that right up tight like that? Probably best to have it down just a little bit. So that is 19 and a half, so if I went 19 and 7 sixteenths, a couple of pieces of three quarter pie would be 19 and 7 sixteenths. and 7 16th, right? That's what I said. I think so. I don't, uh, I can't think of any reason why or where this needs, to, I can't think of any reason why this needs to be positioned in any particular spot. I don't want it right out here because it would stick way out here when I'm at, I've got it in the up position trying to access these. So I'll just play around with that a little bit. I need something to hold these from moving. chisels. So, how do I decide? I really have no idea how to do this. What I'm trying to determine is what kind of an arc do I need to put on this. I want that to be fairly, I want the pivot point to be fairly close. 
so that when this closes, this is right up against this. But I don't think that's possible because you'd have to pivot right here. So if you, the farther away you move, obviously the more of an angle this is going to be on when it's in that position. But that's not bad either because then that would keep this piece up. That actually might be smart. If I drop that down a little bit more, and I can put an angled piece up in there that has the magnet, and that means that this thing, when it's when it's open, instead of, instead of being like this, it could be... What an awkward... It could be up like that. That's still kind of in the way. That's not bad. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and do this and then figure out to work backwards. So I'm just going to put a radius on this front corner. What I need is about a something the size of a quarter. Can you change on your part? No. You ever? No. Obviously you don't get paid enough? Obviously. <laughs> it's too big. I can't really get a compass in there conveniently, but I'll try. Can't really get that in the bandsaw. I'm gonna do it on the disc sander fairly quickly, especially on that coarse one. Hey, we got the uh, the big 16-inch joiner working too. Spent part of the weekend on that. It's got four knives. Which one's that? This big one over here got four knives and I only had three sharp so we had to get one more done. It took a while but I got it all set up. Setting those knives probably took me four hours to do. We tried, we never, I don't think we've ever, yeah we did do that one time didn't we? Yeah we did. With on the eight inch. way around. This is a nice machine because it's got so many adjustments. You can move that table in and out. Of course you can go whatever angle you want as well. Just a second, I gotta move this one.
not so if we're going to do it up like that it's not so critical where that lies it needs to be position it I want it up to be fairly high position it right there I'm going to go right on that center point that I used to me with the compass. And I don't know any reason why not to, so i do it other than the fact that I can't drill in from this side. So how am I going to find that? a little bit smoother on the pivoting part and then just leave the threads for the, in the wood or in the plywood. And I guess I can get away with I, I can use that. That's a number 10 by inch and a quarter. I may have to grind those off. That is 3 sixteenths. I want to use my, uh, I was going to use my drill guide and I don't think I have one that's small enough. I don't smell us on that as a quarter of an inch. I off, that's a dowel jig and in order to get a whole board properly when I can't use a drill press is I'll often use that and just clamp it in place and drill, drill down through those holes but I don't have, that doesn't go down to 3 16 So I'll take a 3 16 drill bit and just go bore it through a piece of wood and then use that as the guide. I want that to be straight just so it'll pivot properly. Are you seriously burned up a whole episode on this? I thought we accomplished quite a bit. Now that you're the one that's doing it, is it still a big deal if we go over? Yeah, we still we have a weekly limit. Because Dave and I usually see try to see how far we can go past the thirty minute mark. You don't go too far. this guide. See, I hate, now i got to work all day more without this thing in place. We'll come in the morning. I'll use that as a guide to, to drill those holes so they're nice and square. And then we'll get this mounted. Hopefully it'll work properly. And then we have to install the magnets to get it to hang just right. And then, as soon as we get that done, I want to go right to work on this saw. Uh, that's got to be that problem must be tackled right away. All right, we'll see you Wednesday.